Hey, my courageous Capricorn, and welcome to your weekly, well, sorry, monthly moon reading. Uh, this is just a general reading, so please do take what resonates and toss the rest. Uh, otherwise, if you haven't had a chance to check out your monthly love bonus or your abundance bonus, which is about career and finance, please do so. They are up on the channel. If you do enjoy this reading, however, please do like, subscribe, share, and smash that notification bell because you don't want to miss the upcoming weekly readings and the monthly June readings, which will be coming soon. This is a seven card moon circle. So without further ado, let's get at it, shall we? This first card is kind of what you're facing or what predicament you may be in, situation you're in. Second card is indicative of what got you there, okay? The third card is kind of like a challenge card in traditional tarot in that it is what's kind of keeping you in the situation. Fourth card is your ultimate outcome, okay? And the way to get to your ultimate outcome is by following the fifth, sixth, and seventh cards. All right, so hopefully you can see this, but otherwise we will be going through it step by step anyway. So let's see. Right now we have boundaries, okay? So I see these are an issue for you. So for some of you, you may either be having in a situation where you've thrown out boundaries already, okay? You've kind of laid them out, you've laid them down, and maybe you're having some friction because of it, right? So people are either just not respecting your boundaries whatsoever, or, you know, they're having problems with your boundaries. They're like, you know, you've got too many boundaries, this and that. I can't deal with it. I can't abide by it. So it's causing friction in your work, your relationship, whatever, okay? For others of you, I'm seeing that maybe you're really having trouble. You're struggling uh, setting boundaries. So you know how you feel. You know what you deserve. You know what you want. You know what you don't want. You know, you're a very well aware, self-aware of what your boundaries are. But because of certain fears, issues, you know, that maybe, you know, if you, if you do put them out there too strongly, you know, at work, like I'm tired of this, this, and this, I'm tired of being treated like this. I'm tired of being used and abused. I'm tired of being, you know, uh, overrun for bonuses, raises, this and that work too hard, you know, X, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Or in a relationship, I'm tired of being treated this way, uh, that the people may, you know, just up and leave, you know, okay, well then you can just leave, you know, fine. We'll find somebody else to fill your position at work. Fine. I'll find somebody else to be my, uh, significant other. So you may be having trouble, you know, because your boundaries are being pushed and you just don't feel secure enough to establish them. So, you know, take it as it resonates, which side of that you're on, whether you're on that side where you have laid out clear boundaries and it's kind of causing some issues or whether you haven't laid out boundaries and because of that, you are consistently being taken advantage of and you kind of are at that point where you're like, I'm not really sure how to lay out boundaries now uh, because I've kind of set a precedence where I don't really have boundaries even though I do. Um, and so throwing them out now might be, you know, a little much. So kind of what got you there is purity, okay? So this is you kind of being a purist. You're kind of just a, you know you're a, a pure soul. You're a person who expects to have people treat you well because you treat other people well, right? So in your mindset, you're one of those people that's like, why should I have to establish boundaries? People should know how to act, right? You kind of have that mentality. You're like, I shouldn't have to tell a grown adult to not treat another person like crud. I shouldn't have to tell somebody at work not to um, you know, use and abuse me or, you know, overwork and underpay me or make promises they're not going to keep. Uh, same thing in a relationship, right? This is, we're grown adults, right? Because I don't do that to other people. I would not treat someone like that. Okay. But not everybody is like you. Um, so unfortunately, because you have that kind of pure, uh, innocent kind of good outlook sometimes on life, um, it does lead to issues with you um, establishing boundaries because you feel like they should just be obvious. Um, and they're not for everybody, unfortunately. Okay. And for others of you who have thrown out the boundaries, this is a problem because for some of you, you are so um, stringent in your boundaries because you're like, listen, I treat people with extreme respect. So I expect no less. So your boundaries may be considered, you know, kind of stringent, kind of old fashioned to some people, right? In today's age, you know, they may be like, 
excuse you, you're a little asking a little bit much for me to not treat you like crap, right? Because let's just face it, people aren't the nicest anymore sometimes. They can be very much, if you let them walk all over you, they will. That's, let's be honest. So, you know, and because you're so inclined to be a person who just wouldn't do that by you expecting that from other people and stating that clearly if you do, you know, and that may be how you grew up, you know, you grew up in a very respectful home, a respectful family. And, you know, you had yourself a surrounded group of respectful friends and you guys just didn't do that to each other. You didn't treat each other poorly or like, you know, crud or whatever. And now you've got a significant other that's treating you like crud. You've got friends who are treating you like crud. You've got, you know, work colleagues that are treating you like crud that are really, you know, stomping on your boundaries. And again, this is like, you're telling them over and over, listen, this is ridiculous. You don't do that. You don't treat people like this. And it's like, they're either not listening to you or they're just disrespecting you. And it's really causing friction for you, right? So just take it as it resonates, which side of that you're on. But again, I do feel like the main issue here is that in general, you are a very respectful person and you kind of want everybody else to automatically be that way. So I do think that either way, no matter which side you're coming from, that's kind of the problem, um, which is not a problem. Actually, it shouldn't be a problem, but unfortunately, in, in a lot of cases, it is. It's sad to say. Um, what's kind of keeping you in this circle is release. So I feel like a lot of this is you're kind of just letting a lot of things go because you're like, you know, you're writing a lot of it off, right? You're like, okay, well, what good's it gonna do? That's your thing. I've said my piece and nothing's changing. What can I do? You know, I can say certain things at work, but people just do what they're gonna do anyway. I can say things over and over to my person and they promise to change. Maybe they do for a little bit, but you know, at that point, it's like, then they seem to kind of go right back to their old ways or whatever. It seems like I'm the only person anymore you know, that still respects people's boundaries or this or that. So you've kind of almost, it's almost like you're kind of conditioning yourself into kind of acceptance, right? You're releasing um, your expectations a little bit to kind of almost condition yourself into acceptance because so many people are just kind of stomping on your boundaries. And it's like anytime we get so used to something being a certain way, it's almost like we condition ourselves to like, are we the crazy ones, you know? Are we the ones who are like asking for too much? What is going on here, right? So, you know, I feel like we're you're almost like that. You're almost like, maybe I just need to release these, you know, ridiculous expectations. Maybe I'm asking way too much when, you know, in reality, you're not. It's just people, they didn't grow up like you did, or they didn't come from where you did, or they don't have the same respect that you have, or, you know, just everything's kind of not what you, you want. So, but again, it's one of those things when you're, the more that it becomes normalized, the harder it is for you to like, accept that you're, the, you're in the right, right? You start to kind of release those ideas like, okay, well, it must just be me because everybody else seems fine with this nonsense. So, you know, but that's what's kind of keeping you in it. But your ultimate outcome is power. And in this particular deck, power is indicative of you kind of harnessing your strengths, your power, your, you know, intellect, your intestinal fortitude, your mental fortitude, your emotional fortitude, all of that for the benefit of you and your path. Okay. So it's not like the masculine card in this deck, which is kind of like taking the bull by the horns in every situation and really, you know, putting your foot down. It's not like the sovereign where you're just kind of taking back your control with somebody's kind of been pushing you around. This is more kind of like just asserting your control over your life situation and how you use your uh, tools um, emotionally, mentally, physically, socially, all of that for your benefit. Okay. And I think that's ultimately, you know, one of the best things you can do with boundaries is, you know, ultimately you're going to have to decide I either can or can't put up with this and whatever I can and can't put up with, I'm going to move on in my direction and set that precedence going forward because maybe I just didn't set it well enough from the beginning and we got into a pattern or habit, but from now on, I will make that 1 million percent clear, right? So how do you get there? Well, the first thing is realization. And I think this is number one, is you need to realize, you need to find some, this is more like self-realization, okay? 
So this is the self-realization of what you feel like you want to tolerate and what you don't. What do you accept and what you won't? What if you go through this keyhole into your future, if you're looking into your future where you want to be, what kind of life would you want to accept and not accept, okay? And it doesn't matter whether society approves of it, whether it's what's common, whether it's what's acceptable, or whether you're considered to be old-fashioned or prude or strict or, you know, uh, you know, considered to be, you know, a lot of times people consider it to be, a, you know, a B, the B word, when you have standards, right? <laughs> That's not really the case. You just have standards, right? You're not being a B or whatever. Um, and I think you all know what I'm, I'm referring to with that word, but some people call it that because you're like, I'm not putting up with this. I'm not putting up with that. And that's not what it is. It's just that you have standards. You don't want to be treated as less. And sometimes in today's society, that gets branded as you being difficult, you being bossy, you being all these things, right? Unfortunately, well, and for you, maybe you're releasing those ideas because it's becoming so commonplace that that's what that is. And you're like, well, I'm not that person. So maybe, I, maybe I'm just expecting too much. No, you need to self-realize here that when you look at your life, you want the life that is exactly what you've established in your mind, what you've you know, had or expected. And it's okay to expect that. And it's okay to set those boundaries, right? Those are your boundaries and it's not okay for anybody else to tell you that those are acceptable or not acceptable, right? They're your boundaries. This is your life, right? So you decide, okay? And that's where you first decide, this first realization. The second realization is coming to balance, right? So here's where you balance what you can and can't live with, right? So there may be certain things that even in your self-realization that you say, okay, you know, I realize maybe I am a little bit OCD or stringent or specific about these tiny little things, you know, at home. Maybe my significant other is right. I am a little bit over the top about how you know, the laundry's done or the dishes are done or, you know, at work, I'm a little bit much about people, you know, touching my desk or you know, little things like that, right? Okay. But that's not a major boundary, right? You know, maybe you can come to a balance, right? Maybe this is where you kind of say, all right, I can see a couple little tweaks that I could make that maybe people do see as like, that's annoying or that's whatever. And I can accept that, right? That's part of self-realization too, is coming to a reasonable compromising balance, right? You want to fit in society too. You don't want to completely be like, it's my way or the highway because that's not really, you know, balancing either, but it's not compromising, you know, your boundaries either. Okay, I mean, when it's an important boundary, that's one thing. That's that's keeping a balance, though. The other things, there are certain things that aren't as important that you might be like, yeah, okay, I get it. I'm a little much about you know certain foods or whatever, right? Okay, we all have that those those eccentricities, those quirks, right? That if you really sit down and think about it, you know, or if you went to a psychiatrist or something, and they're like, why are you like that? You're kind of like, I don't even know, right? So those, that's where your balance comes in, right? That's where you're like, okay, that is something I could work on, but I'm still not going to give up my major boundaries because those are things that are set in stone. I'm not going to be disrespected. I'm not going to have somebody in my space. I'm not going to have somebody tell me what to do. I'm not going to have somebody call me names. You know, those kinds of major boundaries do not need to be um, messed with, right? And then your last card here is going to be pleasure, right? Because here's the thing, it's like KonMari, right? And I'm hoping I'm saying that right, but that whole idea of stuff in your house, like trying to not be a hoarder, right? If it doesn't bring you joy, let it go, right? So again, this is kind of like pleasure. It's kind of that thing that if these people or this job or whatever it is, is not respecting your boundaries. And even when you've done the work, right? To kind of think about it, and say, okay, I can give on some of these little things that really are insignificant. I am willing to compromise. I am willing to try to be reasonable, but I'm not going to give on something major like letting you call me names, disrespect me, stay out at night, overwork me and underpay me. These kinds of things, you know, major common things that should be common sense to most people that are decent human beings, right? Okay, if it doesn't bring you pleasure at that point, if they're still not doing things that are kind enough to make you feel like you are happy, you are content, you are glad to be 
at your work, I mean, as much as you can be glad to be working for the most part, you're glad to be with your significant other, then that's your sign that most likely they're still not respecting your boundaries. They're still not giving to you what you deserve to be given. You know, you've tried to balance. You've, you know, you've realized that, you know, what it is you can deal with, what you can't, what's acceptable, what's not. You know, you've tried to be giving enough. You've tried to make you know, some sort of concessions, right? And balance things out as much as possible. And at that point, if they're still not willing to try to do the things that help make you happy too, right? Ex expressly those things that are, you know, respecting your boundaries, respecting the things that you absolutely uh, are make or break on, then at that point, they just need to go, right? At that point, you need to harness your power, to say, listen, I'm in, I'm enforcing these boundaries. I'm playing my trump card, which is my talents, my skills, my uh, you know, emotional, my emotional power, my physical power, my in intellectual power. I am playing my trump card by harnessing all these, and I am going to enforce my boundaries. And if you can't accept that, then you can go right. And I will find somebody else. I will find a job. I will find a position. I will find a person. I will find a place, a thing, a whatever it is that this situation is for you um, that is not respecting your boundaries. I will find something better. I will release this so that I can receive something better that is going to be more in line with my ideals, more in line with the, the way I think, the values that I have, and help me to get to a place where I can grow, develop, be happy, be joyful, have pleasure, feel balanced, feel loved, feel respected, all of those things, okay? And this is where you can flex your power and move forward knowing that, listen, I did what I could. You know, I didn't ask for too much because I really put myself through the paces coming to what was real and what wasn't. I put myself through the paces of really trying to balance it, you know, giving on anything I thought was, you know, petty or little or could go and they still weren't willing to give. So at this point, you know, they're just using and abusing me and I am not here for that. I am not on this planet to be used, abused or disrespected. So I am going to use my power to move forward in my best interest in a way that behooves me and not somebody who can't respect me. So anyway, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please do like, subscribe, share, all that other great stuff. And I hope to see you back for your weekly reading and your June reading. So don't forget to hit that notification bell. Bye.